Matt Simmons, thank you so much for joining me for Beyond the Pitch, uh, where we normalize talking about finance. So you grew up in Hertfordshire, correct? I did indeed, yeah. What was yeah. that like? Uh, suburbs, very middle class, um, leafy, no <laughs> complaints. So uh, what did your parents do for a living? Uh, my dad was in the city, okay. um, and mum's at home <laughs> looking after um, me and my three siblings. Okay, so you have three siblings. I do indeed, That's a big yeah. family. Yeah, uh, reasonable, yeah. There's a few guys in the team have quite large families. Yeah. So growing up, did you guys talk about money at all? Saving, investing, was that ever a topic of conversation? Not really. Wasn't, yeah, it wasn't wasn't coming up at the dinner table, put it that way. Uh, my mum still to this day buries her head in the sand on that topic. So she, <laughs> I think a lot of people are yeah, in that she, boat she, too. Yeah, it's, it's not a common topic. Yeah. So uh, when you became pro and your life obviously changed a little bit, did you, how did you start to manage your finances? Is it something that you do on your own? Is it something that your family helps with? Um, took advice from my dad. Yeah. Um, after university, uh, headed down to New Zealand, and I think there's a bit of a misconception with rugby, like we're not earning, it's not football. Yeah, yeah. So you're doing okay, but it's, it's nothing crazy. But yeah, I just knew that I wanted to come back to, to England and, and get a get a home, and that was the main driver really, just, yeah. just saving, um, putting stuff away to pay for my deposit. Right, invest in a property that was, sometime yeah, that down was the always, line. Yeah, kind of bricks and mortar was my angle. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, when you did start, you came to the Quinns, did you start to get a financial planner or was it still kind of on your own there? Interestingly, so I'd met a few financial advisors mm -hmm. and yeah, actually I only got a financial advisor last year. It's mm -hmm. one of my ex-teammates who represents a few of the guys now. Okay, very cool. What was the decision behind that? Was it Trust, just, yeah. ultimately. So how'd that work? So now do you sit down with him? Do you have meetings with him? You go over your finances? Or yeah, do you just let him quite do... regularly actually. Okay. So I'd say every three months we go through everything. But then I can just drop him a text or a call. We've got a, um, a good personal relationship as well as a good business relationship. So uh, that's ideal for me. Finance talk essentially is like a language, just the way that rugby talk is like a language. Yeah. How literate do you feel in the world of finance? Poor to moderate. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of um, acronyms uh, for things that I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, I'm picking up on as we go. Um, I'm no finance guru by any means. Do you find though that your financial advisor is helping you? Yeah, he really thumbs it down for me. And yeah. I need that. So it's <laughs> I perfect. think a lot of us do. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Do you feel like he's taught you a lot about finance that maybe you didn't yeah, know? Yeah, a huge amount. And looking back now, I should have done it far, far earlier in my career. Okay, so now speaking of earlier in your career, I want to talk about uh, a couple spending habits that you maybe had early in your career that hopefully maybe you've grown out of. So when you got one of your first big paychecks, uh, can you think of any big splurges that you had? Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> nothing crazy, mm -hmm. but more nights out, I'd say, after a few couple of drinks, you get a generous, especially with <laughs> friends who just finished university and you're the only one, uh, say, who's in employment. Mm -hmm and uh, you've got a bit of disposable income, often it comes down to nights out and you regret that a little bit in the morning sometimes. So with a range of salaries and endorsement deals and time in the league, etc., here, even in the changing room with the Quins, do you find that there's a certain amount of pressure to upkeep with the standard that some of the other guys are at as well at the point that they are in their lives? Definitely, I, I think it's just human nature to a certain extent. Obviously there are guys who are outliers and, and don't come to go down that path and, and drive their old banger around and they're happy to do it. <laughs> um, for me, I'm probably like somewhere in the middle. I, I, it took, took me a little while um, to kind of realise that I don't have to do that. Yeah. Um, and now I'm, I'm 30, I'm an old man uh, in a changing room, so I, I, I see it in a very different way. Yeah, so there is investing when it comes to finance, of course, but there's also investing, if you're a pro athlete, in your body, which is, you know, your biggest commodity. So do you find that you take the time to invest in your body, be it with health, fitness, etc.? Yeah, definitely. I, I, it's also something that's crept up on me, um, turning 31 next week, so I, I've <laughs> hopefully man. got a few more years left, but I've got to start looking after myself really a little bit better. Um, in terms of everything off the pitch. I mean, we're really lucky here at Harlequins. They take great care of us and, and go out their way if you're playing a lot of minutes to really look after you in the season, which is, which is really important. Great, thank you so much for chatting with us. Perfect, thank you.